Hang up your coat. Thought you promised me to put those away. I will later. You will now. to the roof. Hold on, I'm on the phone. I will when I'm done. Hi, thank you for holding. My name is Bridget. What can I help you with today? Hi, yes, I've received stacks of bills all postmarked the same day. What and is the account number? Um, it's 178-37940. And your address? 1214 Rosa Parks Avenue. Sir Vivi. I received stacks of bills all at once for hundreds of dollars, and I want to know what it's all about. My bill is only supposed to be twenty-five dollars a month, and yeah, that's what it says on the bills, and it's ridiculous. I subscribe to the Walter Cronkite Memorial Basic Package, which is only supposed to be twenty-five dollars a month, and. I have sent you checks every month for the programming I signed up for, which you have accepted. I never requested a switch because we don't need any more channels, and I don't understand why you sent me so many. Ma'am, my records show that when you failed to cancel the free trial of the Urban Upgrade, you... What free trial? When was this? We've only ever had the news, kids shows, the history, the basic package. Okay, so you sent your notice in March, let me know about the free trial. Excuse me? What do you mean income bracket? Mom. No, I don't owe anything. What kind of company think What kind of company thinks they can get away with $45 a month? Well, you fucking work for them. Oh, really? I'm not, though. I'm a demographic. Oh, Edward, this is a grown-up conversation. I paid my bills, lady. And it doesn't even work. Check your fucking computer, lady. Do I need to get my checkbook out and read you the number? I'm not asking you to do anything illegal. Oh, no. legal just as channels without my permission. I don't want to subscribe to any program, and I'm sick of making this phone call. I don't care about... Yes, I told you to put me on the phone with him a fucking hour ago, and you sat there and bitched about... I paid for what I subscribed to, lady, and I don't owe anything.
Eddie? I want you to go to the phone right there. The number's yeah. on the screen. Run upstairs and fetch my checkbook from off the dresser. And you'd like to sew it through a credit card. Is it somebody really capable of doing something spectacular for you? Mind what I say, Edward. We'll see your distinction and decide to invest in your life. It is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Uh, hmm? Don't forget to get whatever Mrs. Topham drinks on your way home tomorrow. I don't want her bitching again. What was it? Dry sherry. you for hosting. I simply live for the evenings when I don't have to cook. Oh, so good. It smells lovely, Cindy. You must have been cooking all day. Oh. May I take your coat? No, please. please, make yourselves at home. Ed will be fixing your drinks in the living room. Understood. A horrible bother. Do you have a hanger for my, you know, linen? <laughs> oh, of course. May I offer you something from our cabinet, Diane? Shall I be bad, Julian? Be bad. I think I will. A strong scotch and soda, please. Mm -hmm. You only deserve it, darling. <laughs> <laughs> She's been in such a frenzy over the Topham Project, Ed. Let's forgive her. <laughs> of course. Will you be having a mojito, Julian? I've just prepared a picture. You remembered that I'm absolutely fixated <laughs> on mojitos. Of course. But only if the mint came from Cindy's glorious garden. <laughs> Aren't I a nuisance? <laughs> <laughs> Edward, you will scream when you see those light fixtures. I'm sure. Diane's work has always been impeccable. I'm glad Louise brought our firms into collaboration. Cheers. Mm. Mojitos. I used to love these in college. <clears throat> that must be Louise and Monty. You all remember my son, Madison, of Madison. course, Louise. <laughs> Montgomery Madison. had to rush off yeah, yeah. to Los Angeles mm. this afternoon for business, so mm. Madison agreed to be my date for tonight. Aww. <laughs> I really should have let you know, Sunny, but with all the new lofts newly on the market, 
I seem to have lost all sense of social graces. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it at all, Mrs. Toppin. We have Louise. enough food. Louise will do fine, dear. After no. all, your husband's been only contracting my firm for ages. <laughs> <laughs> I'll join you in a drink. Edward, dry sherry, mm -hmm. Madison. Is that a late harvest Zinfandel you're drinking? An earthy Pinot Noir. Care for some? Oh. No, in that case, I'll have a wet martini. Thanks. Shall we begin dinner? Madison, a Cornell man, and you've never taken one of my women's studies courses? I'm deeply hurt. <laughs> I've always been intrigued, Doctor, but history is such a rigorous discipline. <laughs> yes, his workload is so demanding that he hardly has any time to visit his old mother anymore. <laughs> Yet somehow he remains active in the Unitarian Church on campus and keeps a girlfriend. <laughs> It's such a treat to have you with us tonight, Madison. Yes, it is. It's so rare to find young men of your age staying involved in the church. <laughs> I just find that no matter what people might say about organized religion, there is no better avenue to pursue charity work than the church. I do. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I've been making some fantastic contacts with AmeriCorps, so maybe after I graduate, I'll spend a year being able to make a real difference. They're always looking for educated individuals to assume the more upper level positions, you know, organizing and managing housing developments. Maybe I'll go to Louisiana or Georgia because it's just the sad truth that the echelon in the greatest need is the African American community. <laughs> Isn't that nice? We should do something like that, Edward. I'm sure they'd be thrilled to have you, especially with your mother's background in real estate. <laughs> if they ever need an interior designer, be sure to contact my firm. <laughs> I saw the fabrics that you chose for Mother's Master Bedroom, Diane, mm -hmm. and I believe your tastes are a little over AmeriCorps' budget. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't they turn out divine? <laughs> She's such a connoisseur oh, of fabrics. What research are you conducting this term? Oh. Edward showed me your article in the New Yorker about oysters. Oh. <laughs> the Hidden Pearl. A feast of sexuality and a representation of oysters in a 17th century Flemish painting. Such an important piece, Julian. Would you be uh, publishing again soon? I'm in the researching stages on a book, uh, The Symbolic Redemption of Mankind to the Figure of Mary. Interesting. Mm -hmm. How do you mean? I don't want to bore you oh, all. Oh, no, come on, <laughs> please. Well, the Eve narrative seems to be negated through the rise of the cult of the Virgin through the 12th century. I come to my book with the following question. What did early Western civilization crave? What hunger did the Virgin Mary satisfy that Eve does not? Hmm. So, what's the answer? Well, like all of my work, I, I only intend to provoke questions rather than answer them. Topics such as these are purely interpretive. But there is a historical context conditional in my thinking. In the 12th century... Well, I do hope you are approaching the question progressively, Julian. Eve is demonized for aspiring to be like Adam in the name of progress. Mary is glorified practically for being a servant. <laughs> Forgive me, Louise. I, I think that's an oversimplification. Why should the Virgin be criticized for being pious and everything maternal? <laughs> I think you've missed my point. Eve has fallen out of favor precisely because she contradicts that sort of thinking. Is Eve unacceptable because she is independent or ambitious? It is obvious that Mary is nothing more I than... think it's crude to phrase the conversation in this manner. Julian, perhaps you can enlighten us, but I don't see how this has anything to do with Mary. How can we construe the miraculous mother of God Really, as... Edward, you speak of her as though she were a real person. Remember, 
Men wrote the Bible and constructed her to make women feel guilty for wanting their fair share of power. Eve demanded equality and she seized it. She was the original liberated women, paving the road for Jackie Kennedy and Oprah. We're not talking about Oprah here. We're talking about a most miraculous lady whose love for mankind is as strong as God's. Have you any idea what that means, Louise? Perhaps you need to be a woman to understand. Mmm, Cindy, this aioli is so surprising. How charming you can cook. Oh, Edward, you two are so lucky to have such a beautiful idyllic home. Um, point me to the washroom. In all my needs and temptations, Mary, let thy name be ever on my lips, ever repeating thy sacred name, Mary, Mary. What consolation, what sweetness, what confidence fill my soul when I pronounce thy sacred name? I thank God for having given thee, for my own good, so powerful, so lovely in me. Exactly. And that's why the restaurant's name is Iron Man. Yeah. 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 